This video was brought to you by our brand new podcast, Truss Issues. Subscribe by clicking the link below. The UK has a new Prime Minister. After weeks of hustings, discussions and debates, the Conservative leadership contest finally came to an end on Monday when Liz Truss was announced as the new leader, officially becoming the new Prime Minister on Tuesday. And the former Foreign Secretary comes into the job at, well, a difficult time for the UK, with soaring energy bills, inflation spiralling out of control, and a Conservative Party, in the eyes of some, on the brink of fracturing. Beyond the UK borders, however, Truss faces an even bigger challenge, resetting the UK-EU relationship. So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at what Truss's premiership might mean for UK-EU relations going forward, and whether Truss will be any more successful than her predecessor, Boris Johnson. Before delving into whether Liz Truss is any better than her predecessor, it's best to lay out the problems facing the European-British relationship. Broadly speaking, there are three main areas where the UK-EU relationship is on the rocks. Northern Ireland, broader post-Brexit relations, and relations with one European country in particular, France. Let's take each in turn, starting with the sticky issue of Northern Ireland. Ever since the referendum, the question of Northern Ireland's relationship with the rest of the EU, and by extension its relationship with the UK, has been under the spotlight. From Theresa May's backstop through Johnson's Northern Ireland protocol, the intention on both sides has been clear. No hard border on the island of Ireland, and nothing could inflame tensions and damage the Good Friday Agreement. That's created what's sometimes been described as the Brexit trilemma. The UK had to choose between remaining in the EU's customs area, a hard border on the island of Ireland, or a de facto border in the Irish Sea, prizing apart Great Britain and Northern Ireland. Now, obviously, none of these are ideal options from a Brexiteer's perspective. And given that both Prime Ministers have stressed that the UK as a whole would leave the EU, that the Union would not be damaged, and that we could have a hard border, well, they pretty much backed themselves into a corner. Resolved only when Johnson agreed to, in effect, leave Northern Ireland in the EU's customs area and implement a de facto border in the Irish Sea. As a result, all goods going from Great Britain into Northern Ireland are required to follow EU laws, even post-Brexit. Now, that might look like a solution to the problem for a moment, but the issue is that actually implementing the checks between Northern Ireland and Great Britain wasn't exactly political plain sailing especially for a political party whose full name is the Conservative and Unionist Party. So over the past few months, we've seen Johnson's government toying with the idea of potentially disapplying parts of the Northern Ireland Protocol, specifically the parts managing the relationship between Northern Ireland and the EU, as well as them threatening to deploy Article 16. For those who don't know, Article 16 of the Northern Ireland Protocol is the safeguarding mechanism within the agreement, which states that if the application of this protocol leads to serious economic, societal or environmental difficulties that are liable to persist, or to the diversion of trade, the European Union or United Kingdom may unilaterally take appropriate measures. What this means in normal speak, though, is that if either party, the UK or EU, think that the protocol is doing serious harm, then they can unilaterally change the policy to get rid of that harm. In fact, back in January, a senior government official wrote in The Telegraph that while the priority was to protect peace and stability in Northern Ireland via a negotiated solution, if it was necessary, they would trigger Article 16, stressing that this safeguard clause was explicitly designed and agreed by all sides to ease acute problems because of the sensitivity of the issues at play, which certainly sounds like fighting talk. But surely, Liz Truss, the new Prime Minister, wouldn't be so bullish, right? Well, you'd be wrong. In fact, that senior government official just happens to be Truss herself. And since that article, Truss has refused to back down. According to a report in the Financial Times towards the tail end of August, Truss was considering plans to trigger Article 16 within days of entering Downing Street. 
However, within hours of becoming leader, reports surfaced that Truss wouldn't be triggering Article 16, but merely notifying the EU of the UK's intention to roll over grace periods yet further. Ultimately, though, whether or not Truss actually triggers Article 16 is, for now, anyone's guess. But the reoccurring debate exposes a key fault line that may end up defining the UK-EU relationship under Truss. On the broader relationship, though, things don't look that much better. When Truss took over from David Frost as the UK's negotiator in Brussels, EU officials were optimistic. After all, Frost made himself an extraordinarily unpopular figure in Brussels and the EU capitals. However, Truss ended up taking as hard a line as her predecessor, and EU opinion towards her soured very quickly. A senior European diplomat talking to Euronews in June stressed how after Liz Truss came in, we had hope. But look how that turned out. She was supposed to be more pragmatic, and she said she wanted to resolve the issue. But just look at her now. She's taking a much more extreme approach. To give you a sense of how tense relations are, in July alone, the European Commission launched four new legal cases against the UK. One for failing to comply with the Union Customs Code regarding the movement of goods from Northern Ireland to Great Britain. One for failing to implement EU laws on VAT and e-commerce. One for failing to implement general EU rules on excise duties and a final one for failing to implement the EU's rules on excise duties related to alcohol and alcoholic beverages. Each of these is a political hot potato in its own right, requiring the UK to either back down or fight. And these are tough decisions for a new prime minister in the middle of a cost of living crisis with a divided country and party. And it's not just Europe as a whole that Britain has issues with, it's France more specifically. On the French relationship, it's pretty evident that things haven't got off to a good start. Asked whether she saw French President Emmanuel Macron as a friend or foe just a couple of weeks ago, Truss said that the jury is still out, leading to a backlash from across the continent, including from Macron himself, who hit back saying that if we aren't able to tell between the French and the British if we are friends or foes, the term is not neutral, then we are heading for some serious problems. That's not to say that the relationship is completely dead in the water, though. France's foreign minister has already offered up a diplomatic fig leaf, saying that if Liz Truss became prime minister, let's hope it's a new start. Ultimately, though, the future trajectory of the EU-UK relationship will probably play second fiddle to the domestic situation in the UK. As we've covered on our UK channel time and time again, the UK is on a cliff edge, struggling with the spiralling cost of living crisis, a summer of strikes and rocketing energy bills, with no easy path out of any of these issues. So Truss obviously has enough on her plate without a renewed fight with Europe. In any case, it's early days, and while the trajectory doesn't look great yet, there's time for the bromance to become more than just political. And as a final thing, if you're interested in how this relationship shakes out, then you should check out our new podcast, Truss Issues. Watch this. Liz Truss has just been voted into number 10, with 57% of Conservative Party members choosing her over opposition Rishi Sunak. Now though, campaigning is over, and she needs to handle some of the rockiest times in modern British political history. A war in Europe, an impending energy crisis, spiralling inflation, and growing unrest, even within her own party. Can she cope with all of that? Well, the first hundred days will be critical, so we'll be documenting her first weeks in power, every Tuesday and Friday, until she makes it to a hundred days presuming she does. Anyway, join us on any of these dates for our new show, Truss Issues. You can subscribe on YouTube right now and get the video version here, or watch ad-free over on Nebula. Or if you prefer to just listen, then we're getting the audio feeds ready right now. So subscribe on YouTube to be notified when the audio versions go live. Anyway, I'll see you on Friday. 
and then on Tuesday, and then on Friday, 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 and then Tuesday, and then on Friday, and then Tuesday, and then on Friday, and then it will be on Tuesday before being on Friday, and then it's on Tuesday again before flipping back to Friday, and then Tuesday, and then Friday, and then Tuesday, and Friday, and Tuesday, and Friday, and Tuesday, and Friday.